What's up everybody? JT is behind the camera this time. I wanna see what he's got. So we're gonna film this q and I asked you guys on Instagram probably like eight years ago to ask me questions um, and now we're finally getting to it. Here are some end of the everybody tour because everybody tour just ended and by just ended I mean it was probably like four months ago. Four months Was it four months ago? But here's the end of tour Q&A. And we'll probably put screenshots of you guys up here because JT's editing it and he's got time today. First one, I like this. Geo.the.tree, if you could be in any rock band, any time, any time period, I think he meant any time period, any time period, which would it be and why? I mean, my first choice is gonna be Zeppelin, you guys know that, but I can't give, the, they're too good though. I can't, I don't wanna ruin Zeppelin. Sublime, maybe. I think if I could have been in any of them, Either Sublime or Nirvana. Nirvana would have been tight. And Nirvana went through guitarists like crazy um, right at the beginning, so that could have been me. When's the next track gonna drop? At some point, at the beginning of, what year are we in? 2018. Oh, sorry, that was from uh, Joshua underscore Ledesma. Will you be releasing more music soon? Yes. You love Shelter? Thank you, it's Mariana301. What is my go-to gas station snack? None anymore. Actually, no, I lied. I think a better one for me would be an airport snack, uh, and it's the dried fruits. I always go for the dried fruits. I forget what it is, I think it's called peeled. They're so expensive in the airport. They're so expensive in the airport that the lady at the cash register tells you how expensive they are to make sure that you wanna buy it. They're like nine bucks for this, or no, like 10 bucks for this bag, like this big of dried fruit, but they're so good. They're not that expensive at the gas station though, so try them. What was your favorite part of Boston when you're on tour and I was the kid who stuttered when trying to get a picture with you in Boston? Uh, my favorite part of Boston while I'm on tour is probably the people. I always like the people in Boston. And I'm a huge Sox fan, so especially when we play at the House of Blues, I like being right there. And lobster. The lobster's great. Um, is there more music on the way? Glad that you guys are asking about this. Yes, there is lots of more music on the way. And by lots, I mean you will definitely get a track in January. Um, and making up videos. Shot by this guy. We'll have, we'll have a JT uh, making up video. That camera shake means he's acknowledging me. Favorite Led Zeppelin song? Over the Hills and Far Away. Because Over the Hills and Far Away is um, the song that made me want to make music. Funny story, my painter, I say my painter, the painter that was over painting my parents' house when I was a kid picked up my really terrible Yamaha kick guitar and uh, started playing Over the Hills and Far Away. And that was the first time I'd ever heard anybody play an instrument in front of me. And uh, I was infatuated. And that got me um, obsessed with really wanting to learn my guitar. Even though I quit lessons, I went to the internet, shout out the internet, and uh, became infatuated with Led Zeppelin too. What's it like knowing you've only dropped one song and because of that song, you're already helping people cope with things like anxiety, like myself. I hope I can meet you in person someday, thank you. I hope I can meet you too, Jaleesa. It makes me extremely happy, uh, especially since the merch is out now, Turn Your Insecurities Into Art, because it was so cathartic for me to make these songs. They're all very personal. Even the fun ones at this point are personal. I'm sure I'll write things from other perspectives at some point, but this first batch that you guys are gonna get are very personal. That's why I felt that I needed to put it out there. Like I needed to, number one, get over my fear of putting music out in the world and um, breaking the barriers of being just a DJ. And number two, getting my personal story out there to help people. Because at the end of the day, that's what I wanted to do. Even through DJing, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to, it's like art, to give you a dad joke acronym, I call it alternative reality treatment, A-R-T. When you have good art, you get to escape whatever problems that you have at that point in time and kind of dive into whatever reality that the artist has created for you. And that's why I'm super excited to do it through music because that's been my passion since I was 12 years old or 11 years old whenever that painter came over. So it makes me feel great to know that. Drummer boy, can you buy me a ticket to go see you? Thanks. There are no tickets to go see me yet, but when there are, possibly. Aerial Safarial. Meet up in NYC? Um, possibly at some point. It's Courtney Joe. Are you gonna be releasing an EP ever? Yes. And it's coming in 2018. Um, at what point? I don't know. It all depends. I wanna get all my ducks in a row and then put it out. I know what's gonna be released. I just don't know how I'm gonna release it yet. Putting out Shelter now was to kind of get it out there and get people used to what I'm trying to do before I hit you with more content. Is Houston one of your favorite cities? Yes, and also, I think you guys are like number three most listened on my Spotify, which is cool to know. H-Town, hold it down. Go Astros. Even though I'm a Red Sox fan, I'm really happy to see the Astros win. What is my favorite book? I don't know, I keep, I keep a few books in my uh, backpack at all times, but I wouldn't say that I have a favorite. 
I'll get back to you on that. Zeppelin or ACDC? Zeppelin. Duh. I mean, rest in peace, Malcolm Young, though. I loved ACDC. Uh, where do I plan to live for the next part of my life? Denise.rr? New York. Um, as you guys know by shelter, I'm pretty much a nomad. And even though I claim New York City is home, I haven't signed an actual lease there ever. I've only sublet and airbnb so I'm excited to finally sign a lease at the beginning of next year. Uh, favorite song other than Shelter at the moment? New or old? Uh, new songs? I haven't really been listening to anything. Old? Probably The Ocean by Zeppelin. And that's just because I listened to it like two hours ago. <laughs> that's how my mind works. My favorite DJ that I look up to? I don't know. It's a, see, that's the thing is I feel it. Like I felt... I wouldn't call it insecure, but I felt like I had missed a step or I was missing something when I never had a mentor. Um, I never had a DJ mentor. So it was it was kind of just up to myself. I'd say as far as my style goes when I'm DJing, it's a mix of uh, DJ AM and Kid Capri. DJ AM inspired how I did parties starting in college and Kid Capri, I saw a concert in uh, Brooklyn in 2012, right before I did the Logic show for the first time ever but the way he handled himself on the mic inspired me. For someone who wants to be in the industry but can't really move to LA, how would you recommend making connections? At what point in your craft do you start reaching out? P.S. Love your spirit and vibes, shine bright, chase. Thank you, Balandage. Uh, also, she goes, also, do you want fans to call you rhetoric or chase? I don't care. I'm gonna respond better to rhetoric just because I feel like when people yell chase, especially at shows, I get really confused, like I need to go back or like I'm doing something wrong or I'm in the wrong place. Um, when people yell out rhetoric, I'm much more prone to come over and you know, oh, this is good. But it doesn't matter either way. I'm not like, I'm scolding you for calling me by my real name. I'm just letting you know what goes through my mind when that happens. But yeah, either one, I don't care, we're friends. Someone who wants to be in the industry but can't really move to internet, internet, internet. Find, you know, subreddits, find YouTube cultures, Instagram people that, think like you, um, that are making cool stuff at your level, even higher than you, and reach out to them. Like you you guys, I say you guys, we live in the age of the internet now, and there's it's so simple to make connections, or at least to reach out to try to make a connection. Love you, Dad. Love you, son. Shelter music video coming soon? I don't know about soon, but it's definitely coming. I mean, you guys saw, I, I did a trailer just to release the song. There's definitely gonna be a music video. What color is my toothbrush? White. I just joined the uh, 21st century everybody and got an electric toothbrush. I've been using the regular ones for so long and my teeth feel great. Emily the Pope. Was it difficult to gain the confidence to release something like Shelter? Yes. Dude, I did not want to show a single person my stuff for so long. I couldn't, I just couldn't do it. Or I'd show them the beat and take the acapella out, but I was super self-conscious about it. Nobody knew that I was working on music until stuff was done. There was a very select group of a couple homies in New York that had heard the first song that came up when I was like, this is my sound. But everybody else didn't hear it until I was pretty much done with the stuff that I'm planning on releasing soon. Even now, I can show people, like once I get an idea down, I can show people, but I can't work with people in the room. Like I have to be by myself. I have to live by myself. I have to be in a space where I feel safe enough to dive deep introspectively to write this stuff and uh, kind of express it the way that I want to. So yeah, it was really difficult to gain that confidence and it took a while, um, but it felt really good. When is the next song coming? January. Where do you get motivation for your outfits? It's however I'm feeling that day. It really is. If I'm having like a really, you can you can instantly tell my mood by what I'm wearing. If it's crazy, <laughs> I know you're about to. I'm in sweatpants. I'm in a great mood. But yeah, where do I get motivation? From my grandma. When I was a kid, she wears crazy stuff. She is. If I'm a power clasher, she's like super saiyan power clasher. Luke underscore Varner. You're stuck inside a horror film. There's a door in front of you. Killer is chasing you down. You don't know how much time you have left but you find a handgun in a cabinet on your left. What do you do? Dog, I walk out the door and run away. Like what? <laughs> Is there something I'm missing in there? Yeah, I walk out the door, I run away. That's why, that's what I, that's actually what I run for. I don't really run for fitness or like mindful meditation. It's actually practice in case I get stuck inside of a horror film. So thank you for asking Luke underscore Varner. You unveiled the secret. What inspired me to make my own song? I've been wanting to do this and I have been doing this on the low forever. Obviously when you're a kid, you're writing freaking love songs to girlfriends that you keep for like 24 hours. 
And then when DJing got serious, I took a break from it because I thought that, oh, maybe DJing was actually my musical passion, um, but it kept creeping up on me. Then I finally gave it a shot and it was the most rewarding thing I've ever done in my life, even including DJing. So I knew I had to go, really go for it. Alex Limp 8, who's your current favorite artist? Love Shelter, by the way, can't stop listening. Oh, dude, back to the uh, other question. Favorite song at the moment is probably Something Off of Currents by Tame Impala. I love that album when it came out and I just got back into listening to it heavy because I've been looking at Rick and Backer guitars and Kevin Parker uses one. I love Tame Impala. I don't know what song would be my favorite though, but that whole album. Hula underscore hoop. No question here. I'm just stating the obvious. You're awesome. Thank you, Hula Hoop. I remember watching episodes from Just Another Day. Wow. Completely feeling inspired by your work ethic. I love the episode where you graduated from college. You weren't able to attend a walking ceremony, so they threw you a mini one on stage. Very happy for all your success and happy to be. Thank you, Hula Hoop. Um, what's my favorite city? New York City! New York City. When's your album dropping? There will be an EP, yes. Do I miss 757? I like my family, and I like being from there. Um, 757 is an area in Virginia where I'm from, for everybody that isn't from there. I wouldn't go back and live there, though. I feel like that, that was a section of my life, and I love the people there, and I think that it's an incredible culture, but, um, I need to write about it now instead of going back. I was actually talking to Shaggy about that when I went up to Z104. Shelby underscore Porter, what inspired you to flip your lifestyle to a healthy lifestyle? I wanted to see if I could. It was kind of a challenge to myself. After today, I'm really challenging myself to go veggie for this whole tour. The reason I exercise, you know, you exercise basically to stay in shape. I like to give myself challenges of things that are gonna be a little bit hard mentally or that I think that maybe I can't do to challenge myself and get through it. And it's really motivating. It can be little challenges like don't check your phone until you're done showering in the morning, stuff like that. And if you can do it for, you know, a week, two weeks, three weeks, it's really motivating to other aspects of your life. You know, I go through periods where I'm freaking stressed or I'm making music and I eat really terrible foods. But yeah, overall, I'm in the best shape I've ever been in in my life. How did you make the connections possible to become a DJ and get involved with the music industry? Uh, I think that was best said before, uh, but for me personally, kept throwing noodles at the wall, hoping they stick. I don't think that's how the saying goes, but <laughs> it's how the cookie crumbles, you know? Sometimes the turtle wants to race. Yeah, for me, I just, I literally DJ'd anything and everything that came my way in Virginia. Um, even my best friends now in New York, they knew of me because I would DJ every single up and coming rap show that ever went through the state of Virginia, pretty much. Not kidding, this is not an exaggeration. Um, and just happened to be that one was a Logic show. Somebody said, did you just call Nirvana a dude? Uh, Nirvana was a band, I'm sorry. I trolled on the, so I, this is a photo of like the Instagram where all these questions are. This is a photo of me in Guitar Center like this with a Nirvana shirt on that I got in like Scotland or something. It's like, oh, Nirvana's a cool dude. Just learn smells like teen spirit. Time to shred on these losers, bro, or something like that. And people didn't know I was trolling. So there are like a lot of mad comments that I'm going through. Nirvana's not a dude. You're the most basic person I've ever seen. Yes, I'm aware. I look like a young Dave Grohl. Of course I'm gonna know Nirvana. What age did I start making music? Um, my earliest memory was in preschool when we got a recorder and instead of learning hot cross buns, I learned um, like Lion King songs. How many songs have you written? And I love you. Thank you, Carla. Uh, I've written a bunch. How many are coming out? You'll see. Um, how did you think of the theme of Shelter and what inspired you to make your own song? Uh, theme of Shelter, I was in an Airbnb and um, it was a sublet of a friend's friend in New York City. <sighs> Crazy. And I was thinking in, you know, I was making music in the fall, but I was writing about what I thought I should write about. And uh, finally had this effort moment in uh, February when I moved into this new place and was like, I'm just gonna write about things that have terrorized the back of my mind um, for years. And I was like, dang man, it's really killing me to not have a stable space and not having stability. And I was like, I, you know, I feel like that's a universal thing. I feel like everybody is seeking stability and um, can feel what I'm feeling in their own sort of way. And that's how I wanted to shape the song. And once I, the hook came to me so easily and pieces of the verse came to me so easily and the theme came together so easily that I knew it was gonna be a song. And um, when it came to picking the first song to put out, I knew that that one represented me both personally, lyrically, and sonically, you know, through the instrumentation that represented me the best. You guys don't get to see it, uh, but filming Q and A's 
since you guys are so awesome, there were like 200 comments or something, 150. Since you guys are so awesome, filming a Q&A used to be a, a whole day process for me. I'd wake up, I'd find good light, I'd fill the, film the Q&A, and then I'd sift through, because I like to answer everybody's questions, at least a little bit. I'd sift through, and I'd cut out the ones that I felt were relevant and would stick together in a story, and I'm answering like an hour worth of freaking questions. Like that was almost an hour's worth of questions. Um, so you guys don't get to see that. But yeah, it was awesome to answer these questions. There might be a part one and a part two. So if this is part one, that is the end of part one. Uh, part two will be out soon at some point, whatever time JT gets this thing out. Um, and thank you guys so much for asking amazing questions. And thank you so much for the support. It's awesome to hear that you guys are loving Shelter, that you were excited for Rhetoric's Closet even though it's out right now. I'm gonna keep that up. This time, instead of taking away all the time and just constantly, I say constantly, every once in a while, I will update at Rhetoric's Closet, the Twitter and the Instagram with the new products that I put in there. But yeah, thank you guys so much for the support on that. And uh, can't wait to see you during part two of the Q&A.